This video is sponsored by Trend Micro. Every so often I come up with ideas for videos that uh, after I'm done with them I feel like I've made a good video. I mean, you know, every so often, not everyone's perfect, that's all right. And then every once in a while, very rarely, I'll come up with an idea and it turns out better than I ever could have imagined. And this is one of those videos because the concept behind this video, can you replace a PC, a, de a desktop PC, with a $250 smartphone seemed a bit of a stretch at first, but I knew that there was something to it. And ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Or at least I did it. I'm gonna show you how I did it. Right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. So first things first, we're gonna be using an Android phone for this. And I wanna tell you that it is the LG G8 ThinQ. It's the actual first ever LG phone on this channel. Never dealt with one before. Uh, I picked it because of the price. We'll talk a little bit about some of that aspects of it here in a minute. Now this was an Amazon renewed phone. If you've seen any of my Amazon renewed phone videos, you'll know you usually can get a pretty good price on a pretty good product. I'll leave some links in the description for past videos if you've missed those. It's actually a really great place to get some smartphones. And no difference here, this phone came exactly like my other phones in great condition, looks brand new. And if you're not familiar with the LG G8, I'll give you a couple of specs just to kind of get you caught up. This is basically LG's flagship of 2019. It has a Snapdragon 855 processor, a 12 and 16 megapixel camera on the back, 128 gigs of storage, six gigs of RAM, a 6.1 one inch OLED display, IP68, and 3500 milliamp hour battery. Now you might be wondering, why did I pick this and not one of the other Samsung phones I normally have on the channel? Well, I wanted to get this under $300 and for what I wanted, um, especially the feature that I wanted, uh, I couldn't really find that on Amazon. And plus, a lot of people had told me about this phone off of 2019 and even early 2020 that it was a great phone and I wanted to give it a shot. Now, this is not a review of this phone. It's more a review of how I convert this into a desktop. And man, it's not really that difficult. For context, Android 10 actually has a desktop mode that pretty much all Android phones can get, a, can get but the problem is it's not very fully fledged out. It's not got a lot of features. It's kind of missing some things. It's really meant for developers. From there, Samsung, LG, and Huawei have actually made their own desktop equivalents using that kind of underpinnings of that, and they're making their own desktop. Now, I picked this over Samsung only because it was less expensive, $250. Um, any Samsung DeX um, phone, I assume will do the same thing, and I assume Huawei too. The reason I say assume is because there's one particular feature that this thing has that I'm not a thousand percent sure will work exactly the same way. But for the cases here, the LG G8 at about $250 renewed, I mean, it's basically a desktop, bro. It's crazy. Now, as a reminder, the Snapdragon 855 is no slouch. Um, this thing can shoot 4K, 60, all the video games, everything you'd want to do, a very snappy processor on this phone. So while it is a couple of generations old at this point, it's more than enough for what we're going to do. And this is what's so exciting about it. All you need to get this thing into a desktop are just... Well, I mean, just a couple of uh, accessories you probably already have. But before we get into that, you need to make sure that your entire network is protected and I have a sponsor just for you. Well, it's cool to talk about all these gadgets and why you should buy them. The reality is this. You need to protect your home against intruders. And I'm not talking about the ones that knock on your door. I'm talking about the ones that come in virtually. And while a lot of you may have a router and perhaps antivirus on your computer, it's just not enough. And that's where Trend Micro Home Network Security comes in. It protects everything that's connected to your network. It protects every device of your network, from dangerous downloads to malicious websites and even people trying to hack into your devices. It provides powerful and flexible parent tools such as controlling social media, blocking inappropriate websites, and setting time limits so that your kids can take a break, including playing all those Xbox and PlayStation games. And the coolest thing is, if you download the app, it'll alert you when something is going on in your network. And let me tell you something, you don't want anything going on in your network you don't know about. It'll also tell you every single device is connected to your network in case there's something on there that shouldn't be, and so much more. I have a link in the description below, so make sure you check out Trend Micro. This device could save you a lot of hassle. Trust me when I tell you, I've been using it for the last year and I couldn't be happier. Thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. Obviously, you need a keyboard, mouse, and some sort of monitor. In this particular video, I'm gonna be using a USB um, keyboard, a USB mouse, 
and a small touchscreen monitor. Um, you don't have to have those things. You can use whatever you want because in order to invoke the desktop mode, you either need the um, USB-C to HDMI cable, which you can get for about 15, 16 bucks and plug it in and it starts working. And if you have Bluetooth keyboard and mice, then you can do pretty much most of the things I'm gonna talk about here today. Or you can do what I did and get one of these um, USB-C docks that uh, have a couple of USB breakouts, a USB-C for power, an HDMI out. This gives you a lot more options than this uh, because of storage. So let's talk about some of the things that most people think you can't do on a smartphone that you can do on desktop. Now, first of all, uh, any of you that work from home are definitely familiar with Zoom, and Zoom, of course, works on your phone. Some of you have been using it all that time. But think about all the apps that are on the Play Store, pretty much everything, anything you could ever want, including Microsoft Word and all of those other things. And as you would expect, in desktop mode, they work as well. So using the USB-C out into my dock, I plugged in a keyboard, mouse, and you can, if you want, put in like a thumb drive for storage because while this only comes with 128 gigs of storage, you can use like an SSD or whatever the heck else you want. Now for me, I actually had to power both the hub, which powers the phone, and the, um, the monitor. Now the monitor I have also could work directly USB-C to it and then gain touchscreen. But because I wanted to use a specific keyboard and the mouse can be whatever, I just did it this way. Again, your setup could look different. If you have a monitor, a mouse, and a keyboard, you're pretty much ready to go. Now, shout out to some gadget guy, Juan Bagnell, who found this last year. This feature is really cool. All you do is just plug in your USB-C. You'll see a pop-up. It'll ask you if you want to switch over to desktop mode as it starts in mirroring mode, and boom, there you go. Looks just a little bit like a stripped-down version of DeX. If you're not familiar with DeX, basically, it turns your phone into a desktop computer in a way. Now, that could be enough. And most of you would say, okay, that's great, Travis, but there's still a lot of things this thing can't do. But let's go over the things that it can do. And then we'll bridge the gap of some of the things it can't. Obviously, I can go to any browser I want to. I can read all the news. I can watch YouTube. I can watch Netflix. I can do anything I want to. Plus, I can have multiple screens up. And my, can, my phone screen itself is also uh, still usable. I can take text messages, phone calls, especially if I have a Bluetooth headset, like all of the things. Literally, I can come home, plop this on the dock, and have my desktop fired up. And because my dock is powered, it's actually charging my phone at the same time. Now, from a productivity standpoint, that's pretty good. I talked about Zoom before, and you might think, well, I don't wanna have to hold my phone like this for Zoom calls. Can I do it in desktop mode? Yes, you can. This is the thing that really threw me over the top. This is going to bridge the gap for so many people that work from home right now. Zoom is pretty much everything. If you can't use Zoom, you can't really work from home. Uh, and it works perfectly. Not only does the desktop mode actually work for Zoom, the camera on the phone fires up, you just need to have it aimed at you, and it works on the desktop mode. It's absolutely incredible, it works so well. And between that and being able to do any of your Google emails or your desktop apps, or any of the things that um, you may need access to, say Google spreadsheets are totally easy to get a hold of, uh, most things are in the web now anyway. Uh, most people's software uh, has kind of gone to a more web-based experience. So if you work in some type of corporate office or anything like that, you probably have access uh, from home. And for most people who don't even work from home, this still does everything else you would need. Except for I can hear in the comments, there's one thing that I know people are saying, and they're saying this is one of the reasons they would never do this, and that is gaming. Well, 2020 was a trash year, but one thing it did do is it bridged that gap. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, feast your eyes. You can game on this. And I'm not talking about just Android games. Sure, Android games are great. But with the advent of cloud gaming, the gap has been filled. Ladies and gentlemen, you have desktop power at your fingertips, and I love this. Check this out, look. Between Xbox Cloud Streaming, which works amazingly. By the way, I thought I could do it through the uh, desktop mode, but you actually just have to go to mirror mode, and then it just works. Look at this, like I can play whatever the heck I want. And Xbox Game Pass has been amazing with so many games you can play for a really low price. I love this service. There are some great games always being added. That alone would be enough. But some of you are probably saying, well, that's all fine and good, but Xbox Game Pass doesn't have the games I wanna play, like Cyberpunk or even Hitman. But Stadia does. And looky here, Stadia works too. So cloud gaming for the win. Yes, you do need a powerful Wi-Fi signal, sure, but you probably have one of those anyway. So quickly, this thing becomes a productivity powerhouse, an entertainment powerhouse, and now a gaming powerhouse. Can you believe it? you no longer have to upgrade your computer or your processor or your video card anymore. Since most of the processing is done in the cloud and it's just streaming video, 
This two-year-old phone is going to work the same way across these cloud games for, I don't know, until the thing dies. And you can't say that about a video card you buy today. It's not gonna perform the same today as it will in four years. You're gonna have to keep lowering the resolution. But with something like Stadia or even, you know, Xbox Cloud Gaming, you're gonna get the best performance across there. And you know what? The cloud gaming is only gonna get better. Some people may not have great internet right now, but that'll get better. The latency is gonna get better. There is a little bit of latency right now if I go HDMI out, but if I just go directly to the phone, it, it's, it's great. This is actually super exciting because for me, I've always wanted to be able to come home, plop my phone down and not need any type of desktop. Desktop power is really unnecessary for most of us. The vast majority of people only need to do web browsing and maybe a little bit of productivity work, which their phone can already do. Gaming was the last thing that kept people from doing this. And now you can absolutely do it. And while some of you may be saying, yeah, but some of those are subscription based things, they're not really actually all that expensive. If you take a $300 uh, GPU that you might be buying, that's you know at least a year or so of a lot of these services. So you're actually paying for this anyway. And if you have to keep upgrading your processor or RAM or whatever, which you don't have to do here, it all comes out in the wash. So for me and many others, this actually is a desktop replacement, which is kind of crazy. You can take an old smartphone, it doesn't even have to be this particular one, you just need one with a desktop mode and you can replace your desktop. Now I know some of you are gonna be saying there's some other things you can't do or whatever, you, you don't wanna do it and that's cool, it's fine. This was just an experiment to see if it was possible and it absolutely is. I've used it, it works. I can use it for things like Zoom, Slack, things that you do for work. Netflix, uh, Hulu, uh, everything that normally an Android phone does, plus all the desktop features, plus gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, I've done it. Thank you, let me drop this mic and get out of here, watch some of these videos, and I'll see you next time. Peace and love, peace and love.